Guys, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, summer is almost upon us. And with summer comes the chance to get out and do a little more trail running than we do in the winter. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you six tips of how you can like hit the trails with a, a bit of safety and basically, you know, how to succeed as a trail runner. Let's get into it. Oh, this is also the weekly running and training vlog where the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your week of running. I want to hear about your successes and I definitely want to hear about those setbacks. And look, I know I'm going to be giving you six tips on how to succeed as a trail runner, but this is really a conversation. I want you to add your tips into the comments or if you've got something to add to one of the tips that I tell you, I want to hear about it. Typically, I am not that much of a trail runner. It's because there aren't many trails around where I live, although lately I have been getting out on the trails at least once or twice a week, but I'm not mixing it up. I'm always going to the same three or four trails. Oh, and I did get the idea for this video from an article I found in Canadian Running Magazine, and of course, I will put a link to that article in the show notes below. And the highly observant of you are gonna notice that I do have a couple of shoes lined up. These are trail shoes, a couple of props for later in the video. But let's get into it. The first tip to make sure you succeed as a trail runner is to keep your eyes on the trail. My friends, this is a big one. I think this is probably the one I'm gonna spend the most time talking about because it is so important. I cannot tell you how many times I have fallen on the trails. Although in my own defense, I usually trip even if I do have my eyes on the trails. I just tend to be a bit of a shuffle runner and I have seriously gone down more times than I can count. In fact, I would say that if I don't trip when I'm out on the trails, I would say it is more noteworthy than if I do trip. And look, it's, it's pretty obvious why, right? Usually, if we're running on a road, the road is nice and smooth. There isn't too much to trip us up. Of course, if somebody said that to me, I would argue that when you're running on the path, the expansion joints in the sidewalk often, often get me. You know, when the roots get under them and then they push a bit of the path up. I really hate that. That is one of the main reasons I actually choose to run on the road rather than the path. But I think that's a topic for another video. Anyway, on trails, you have rocks, you have roots, you have undulating conditions. You know, all the things that make trail running more exciting can also trip you up. So it's pretty important to keep your eyes on the trail. And if you're one of those people that likes to text and run, I dare you to try that on the trails. And I'm sure there's a couple of you out there that are wondering, Matt, who actually texts and run? Well, actually it's funny because I found myself on this morning's run with my phone in my hand as I was running almost home and I had my camera in the other hand and I was actually running, holding my phone up, trying to download the photos from the camera onto my phone so I could save time when I got home. I'd be taking my life in my hands if I decided to do that when I was out on the trails. But look, I'm not telling you what to do. If you don't mind tripping and falling, maybe that's half of the fun for you, then by all means, run, run and look around at your surroundings. It's probably beautiful, but you are rolling the dice and you may find yourself face planting into the ground, which is okay if it's muddy, if it's rocky, maybe not so much. All right, the second tip, the second tip to keep you successful as a trail runner is to bring a map. And no, we're not talking about a Rand McNally map book, although maybe we are. I guess what I'm saying is it's probably a good idea when you're out running on the trails, especially if they're trails that you don't know very well and that you have the possibility of getting lost, that a map or some way to find out where you are in relation to where you want to go is probably a good idea. Look, a lot of us are not out in the backcountry running. We probably have cell reception. And if we don't have cell reception, we can always download a map to our phones, to our watches, or at least some way to find out where we are in relation to where we've been and where we wanna go. Now, right now, I'm only wearing my Apple Watch. This is very easy to set a track back feature so I can always find out where I've come from if I think I'm lost and I can follow that trail back. And of course, if I do have cell reception, I can always just pull up Google Maps, drop a pin and find out where I wanna go and then head in that direction. And look, maybe this is a bit of overkill. Maybe, maybe you like the idea of just going out and getting slightly lost. And I get it, that is part of the fun, being disconnected. Also, maybe it's a little stressful getting lost and you want to avoid getting lost at all costs. But you do you. Do what makes you happy. I will say that I have been lost quite a few times and not lost, lost, like I always knew where I was. I was in no danger of starving to death. But on a couple of races, I have got lost. And in fact, on my worst race, I was doing a trail marathon up at the Withlacoochee State Forest and I did turn a trail marathon into a 50K. And that was just because I took a wrong turn. I went on a different loop that wasn't part of the race course. By the time I got back on the race course and found out where I was, I had run an extra five miles. So needless to say, if I had a map, or honestly, if I was just paying attention to where I was going, probably would have done a little bit better in that race. Anyway, a map is a nice safety net to have. Let's just leave it there. Okay, the third tip to making sure you are a successful trail runner, this could be one of my favorite ones, is to get the right gear. And yes, look, if you are going out and you're just running on fire roads, maybe you could get away with some road shoes, but 
What is the fun in that? This seems like a great opportunity to go out and buy some trail shoes. It just so happens that I have reviewed several trail shoes in the last couple of months. This one right now is probably my favorite. You guys haven't seen the review yet. This is the Arcteryx Northern LD3. And I've been having a good time testing this out. The full review of this shoe will drop in a couple of weeks probably. Two other trail shoes that I highly recommend are the Tecton X2 by Hoka and the Sense Ride 5 by Solomon. All epic shoes. You won't go wrong. And it, I mean, do you need an excuse to go out and buy another pair of running shoes? Probably not. But if you do, it's probably a safety concern. If you have someone in your life that questions your expenditures on running, just tell them it's a safety concern. All right, it's not just running shoes, although you know, for me, running shoes are the main thing. There are also hiking poles. Honestly, I've never actually used hiking poles. I haven't found myself in a situation where they're needed, but maybe you will. Maybe you want to run up some really steep cliffs or do some really long races, and in which case hiking poles are probably going to work well for you. Then this hydration. When you're out in the backcountry, but backcountry I'm talking your neighborhood trails it's important to bring enough stuff so you don't get too thirsty or too hungry and that's where a hydration pack comes in now I've reviewed a lot of hydration packs but my favorite at the moment is the ultra aspire bronco race vest this is actually the big bronco so it holds a lot more stuff but the bronco the big bronco they are solid vests and that's going to let you keep your arms free while holding a lot of liquid nutrition whatever it else you want to bring I usually stick my camera in there as well oh and here's a bonus tip Bring your camera. You're probably going to see some cool stuff or at least some good views when you're out on the trails. A lot more so than you're just running around your neighborhood. The fourth tip to making sure you are setting yourself up to succeed with trail running is to lower those expectations. This is probably my absolutely favorite tip because it's a biggie. It's a biggie because you are not going to run as fast on the trails as you do on the roads. It's just a lot more resistance, right? So if you are someone that goes out and you like to just do a little bit better on every single run, you might have to you might have to drop that baggage and just let it go and go out and enjoy your run on the trails. Trust me, you will enjoy it more and it's it's basically impossible to run the same times on the trails that you do on the road. I guess it all depends on what type of trails and what type of roads you're running on, but we're talking broad strokes here. On average, it's easier to run on the roads than it is on the trails, so your times will be slower. Open your mind, accept that. The fifth tip for succeeding as a trail runner is to enter a trail race. Now, obviously, entering a race isn't going to make you succeed. You can still succeed just as well without entering a race. But the thing is, is that running trail races is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to get out there, to push the envelope in a scenario where it's just a little more dangerous. I mean, you have the danger of tripping if you don't keep your eyes on the trail. And for me, even if I do keep my eyes on the trail. And it's a good way to mix it up. Remember, change is as good as a holiday, right? So if you normally run road races, why not enter a trail race? Personally, I found the atmosphere at trail races it's a lot more easy going than it is at road races. It's very laid back. And I think I can guarantee you a good time. Remember, keep those expectations low and just go out and run in the woods with your friends. It does sound fun, right? And the sixth tip to make sure you succeed as a trail runner, and this is certainly gonna be different depending on where you're going, where you're running on the trails, but it is to bring food and water. Now remember, we already talked about the gear. We already know that you have a hydration pack with you, so you have the ability to carry extra food, extra water. But if you're out on the trails, you're probably a little further from civilization than you would be when you're running on the roads. So again, I guess everything really comes down to safety. You don't want to be out miles into the backcountry and then bonk and have to have a long walk back to wherever you parked or wherever your house is. You're going to enjoy that hike back a lot more if you're not hungry or thirsty. So throw a couple bars in the back of your pack. Make sure you have plenty of liquid. Got to stay hydrated. Remember, it's probably pretty warm if you're out running running on the trails in the summertime. Generally, we're not gonna be out in like super cold weather and the pouring rain. So bring your own liquid, bring something to eat, have a good time, make a picnic of it. And with that, I had a pretty good week of running. Now my week started off on Monday with 7.5 miles, super easy. Cause this week I had to prepare for Tuesday. Well, it's like every week Tuesday is a workout day. But this week on Tuesday, I knocked out 8.2 miles total, which was two miles to warm up. Then I did six one kilometer repeats with 400 meters recovery in between. And then I cooled down for a mile at the end. Wednesday was a very easy day, 11.1 miles. Did finish that run feeling like it was a bit of a slog, but still, I think that easy run did me good because on Thursday I was able to go out and I ran with a couple of guys. And Thursday is usually my tempo day and I did meet up with the group to actually run a tempo run, but we really did. I ended up running about five miles easy, just chatting. And I noticed the run was getting away from us and then I ran about three at tempo pace, but it was more like a three mile progression. And then I cooled down for a couple miles at the end. So Thursday was 10.1 miles total. And I don't know, I actually finished that run feeling pretty good. Like it wasn't that big of an effort, but usually I run at least five miles at tempo pace. So actually it wasn't that big of an effort. Friday was my day off this week. And then Saturday was 7.7 .7 miles, very easy, followed by another 7.7 .7 miles on Sunday. But Sunday I did run over to the mall, ran up and down that hill. Very, very little effort, but I did go a little bit of incline. So I'm gonna take that as a win. And with that, that brought my week's total to 53.4 miles, which is about 85.94 kilometers. So 
all in all, pretty good week. My friends, don't forget to let me know about your week of running. Remember, successes and setbacks. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days. Oh, by the way, today's emoji is the jellyfish emoji. There is no reason for it. It's just totally random. So I know if you made it to the end of the video. See ya.